It's a place called Sully Island. So I'm going to type it in. Sully, Mulder and Sully. Wasn't he the guy who flew that plane in the Hudson River? His name was Sully, wasn't it? Captain Sully. <laughs> um, there it is. Sully Island. What the hell is all this stuff? That's detail and all, is it? Well, that is. Go on, bugger off you. Oh, for Christ's sake. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. Oh, get on my nerves. Computers get on my nerves. Type in again. There it is. There it is. There it is. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. There it is. All right, so it's just down from Cardiff. It's literally just a drive down, not far from where we were. All right, it's this island here. Um, my experiences from fishing these kind of venues, um, it's not a nice feeling getting cut off by the tide and having to wait until you can go back. So there's something weird about it. Unless the fishing is so ridiculously good that you've got something to occupy yourself with. If the fishing's slow and it's not going very well and you're cut off by the tide, you're going to be thinking, what the hell am I doing here? Anyway, let's read up on Sully Island. Um, this is a good mark. Number of species, especially big winter cod. The ground is very rough. So when the ground is very rough, you know, it's 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 increasing the technica technical abilities of, of the angler quite a bit. You know, so you look at rotten bottom, being hooked up to a good fish and then getting snagged. So there's a whole host of things you've got to do. I mean, for me, you've got a rotten bottom, quite tough gear. And even if it's a good fish and there's rough bottom, you've got to, you've got to hoik it in. You've got to sort of get it in quick. Do you know what I'm saying? If you faff around with it, end up getting snagged up. But it might be you'd have to fish it once, twice, three times until it, you know, until you sort of get really sort of familiar with it. And you might find them sort of better fish just turn up at a certain point in the tide, like an hour before low or when the tide's easing a little bit and stuff like that. And your gear's got less chance of getting snagged up. But for me, they're horrible places to fish. You know, um, if the water was clearer and you could go with spinners or live baits and things like that, that'd be a lot nicer. But that's not the reality of fishing that, that area. Um, it's here, it says here, most anglers use rotten bottom rigs to minimise losses. Big hooks... Big baits are used here for the large cod. Bigger the hook, the more you're going to get snagged up. Big conger eel and plenty of other species such as formback and blonde ray. So that's interesting. So, you know, you might find there's some some areas on the island which are a little bit easier, some softer patches. So here, the monkey pole mark is said to be the best on the island. So I wouldn't know what that means or where that is. Should be very careful about climbing down the rocks, or right, slippery and stuff. Yeah, so you want to be going with somebody else. The island is accessible via causeway, which is only usable over low tide. Safety is paramount, so never try and wade across the causeway once the water starts to cover it. It's best to fish this mark for the first time with someone who has been here before due to the safety issues. Yeah, so again, it's like I've, I'll be honest with you. I don't think I've ever fished anywhere where you get completely cut off. Maybe once, maybe once I have. Um, like I say, the Bristol Channel, it's like, it's not an area. I mean, that's quite a big distance on there. With the arrow here. So you're talking about on the beach here. And you look at these caravans here in this road. I'm not going to measure it. Oh, hang on. There's a chart up here. So you're looking from low tide to get across the island. You're looking at 300 yards. So you... The Bristol Channel is notorious for um, tourists, members of the public, for getting caught out like this and just getting RNLI rescue so many people who get caught up in that, just day trippers, just wandering around, and they get swept off their feet and they get lucky to be alive after time. Um, so for me, is if you're going on there, you've got to be prepared to stay on there. Don't sort of go, oh, I'm going to try and quickly nip back home for tea and... Um, you know, oh, I'll be all right. 
on your own with all your gear, no, nah. no. Nah. So for me, um, personally, I'd rather these sort of marks didn't really exist on my sort of, um, you know, on my list of all my places where I fish. Because these are the sort of places where you would just, especially if you're a bit younger, you'd be like, oh, I could just get my PB from there. You know, this is out and the other, and you know, you'll get, you'll get, you'll, you'll, um, you'll get burnt once or twice. You'll get a close call. You'll probably get away with it, but looking back, you'll think, "Fuck, that was stupid." So, yeah, I don't particularly like these sort of venues. I think they're quite dangerous. Um, but there you go. That's just me. Um, so we'll type in um, another one here. It's just a power station, Abor. Four Beach, Abel Four, Abel Four Beach. I mean, yeah, actually taking risks when you're fishing. Um, I look back and I, I have actually took quite a few. Um, not necessarily this country, but abroad. I was a bit younger at the time, and I look back and that could have been fucking good night, Irene. That's the sort of shit you do when you're keen and you're sort of, you know, you're sort of trying out new places and new species and all this sort of stuff. You do daft things. Anyway, it's taken me to uh, somewhere completely um, not the place. Let's take me to the road. Um, token power station then. Sorry about this. Right, let's, let's take me to it. Last. Here it is. Here it is. It's in the channel. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see it a bit better. So there's Cardiff and it's a lot further around. Right, I'll try and rattle through these as quickly as possible so I don't bore you all to death. Um, but this looks a good spot. So the power station, you need you know, not too many members of the public sunbathing and stuff like that around there. Um, looks a really interesting place. Lots of tide, little eddies. There's a lot of current. You can see the current roaring past this power station sort of um, water jet or whatever the hell it is. Um, thermo sort of cooling or whatever the hell it is you just look at the beach and you can see that it looks a little bit stony biggish sort of stones and looks like some groins up here so this is actually at low water so you'll be casting you'll be, your baits will be on all this so access in here park up not too far walk, you've probably got to walk to the point, this area here. Anyway, that's enough zooming around it. What's it say about it? Right, come on. Scroll down. Right, the beach um, around the power station is great for sea fishing for multiple, multiple species. Mixed ground mark with some sandy patches, a lot of heavy and rocky ground and weed can be an issue all right so the dreaded weed so once a, if there's been a bit of a blow um there's a lot of tide you, you know you're going to get a lot you can get a lot of weed so again neeps um or if they're mid tides biggish tides you want fish sort of around high or low water the last couple of hours either side um and if and if weed and tides a bit of an issue just drop drop it drop it short you can get fish at 15, 20 yards. Um, so um, plenty of species can be caught here, including bass in the summer. Desirable species such as thornback and blonde ray, smooth hound, conger eel. Winter sees many big cod caught. Need I say any more? So it'd be quite popular in winter time. Mark is seen as a low tide venue. So it's a tide tide gets e it eases so there's a lot of tide see where, the, where this point is here 
there'd be a lot of tide there all the way along this bit here be a lot of tide but if you didn't want so much tide you could probably try just stop coming around in here a little bit and dropping it short in here on a biggish tide you might find this this bit of beach along here might be a bit easier all right so you just, just sort of experiment a bit you go a few times and you think oh, that wasn't that good and you know you go the first time and you learn a lot you go the second time you think i'll try here and the picture becomes a bit clearer after you go a few times don't just go and you know just think oh i ain't bloody going there anymore you want to just sort of try and get to know us get, get to know a spot get to know how it sort of works and when the best time is to sort of to go um okay okay so there's another one here monk nash or nash point let's go with this one nash point what does old nashy point say nash point low light Had it. Right, I'm not convinced that's totally it, so we're going to type in monk. Monk Nash Beach, there it is. Monk Nash Beach car park, that's handy. Somewhere to put your car. Yeah, we were just that the, the, the what I had before was just down from that. So it looks like there's a couple there's a couple of venues. Nash Point. So this is this is Nash Point and this is this um Monk Nash area here. Let's have a look. So it looks like you park your car back in the there's a bit of a hike down, which is not ideal. I may be wrong, maybe a bit of a track there and you can park at the end, but it looks a bit tight. Interesting part of the world, this. Right, it's a sandy beach. Great flatfish fishing, turbot and flounder are caught. With the possibility of place and Dover sole in the summer. The sea is calm, smooth hound on hermit crab. The sea is running. This mark can produce bass to ragworm, peel of crab baits. Just cast behind the breakers. Right, Nash Point, this one a bit further down. point which is this one here this area here uh, what's it say about old Nashi there's a headland with a number of rock ledge fishing marks which allow an angler to put a bait into deep water all right conga fishing can be very good large specimens quite strong gear big hooks wire traces I've hardly ever used a wire trace for a conga reel I don't think I ever have May have once years ago. Um, dogfish, bull husk, smooth hound, cod, whiting. Many other species also can be caught here. Daylights and feathers will catch plenty of mackerel here. Spinners can catch the bass in summer. This is a low water mark, but anglers should be very careful on both the incoming tide and slippery rocks. Slippery rocks. Mm. A lot of tide. Just zoom out of it. Yeah. Not on a point there. A lot of tide. You can get the cord. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm starting to wonder how much, how many anglers have actually fished these sort of places. Probably not that many. Makes it quite gives it a bit of extra appeal, I think. Porth call. Right. Porth call, right, this is sort of a town. Um, let's see what this has got to offer. Let's just zoom in and have a look at it. I think there's a pier here or something. A sandy look. Rocky, so you've got rock very rocky round here around the headland. And then by sand. So this probably oozes flatfish. Oh, I just caught up there. Oh, it's a bass, look. It's caught a bass. It's good. Not very big, but bass nonetheless. Um, 
All right, so the Breakwater Pier offers good fish of a range of species. Dogfish, pouting, gurnard, and school bass. It has a nice little scooter there. Uh, mackerel strip squid bait. Sand eel and mackerel fillers can catch form bank ray on the sand, and conger will go for mackerel flapper or whole squid. Peeler and hardback crabs have caught snoo hand here in calm conditions. Winter brings good cod and whiting. Fish can be caught at any any distance, and some decent catches made by anglers fishing at short range. While the end of the pier is certainly a good fishing mark, elsewhere on the pier can produce just as good, sometimes better fishing. The area can be packed with anglers and holiday makers in the summer. Stormy weather and rough seas, waves will crash over the pier, making it dangerous to fish. All right, so there'll be times when the weather won't let you fish. There'll be times when the tourists won't let you fish. In that case, fish at night or very early morning. Um, out, out of the holiday season. So even this area in here, look, you can get yourself on these rocks and just put your bait on an area you know there's some sand. You know, you'd be getting looking at some conga, these sort of patches here, look, at high tide, but you don't want to cast into this lot because it's snag sea. So you could use rotten bottom. Failing that, failing that. And imagine the tide, the tide will look and see what the tide's going to do here. It's just good. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So it's very difficult to fish on an incoming tide because it comes in so quickly. Unless you're up, up high on the pier watching it come in, so you'd probably be, be nice to fish off this pier as the tide's coming in. So probably you'd want to start rig up about half tide in, so the water will be right up here anyway. And just lob it out here on the sand for your you know, your bits and pieces. Look quite good. Car parking. There's a lock look for the, with a boat slot. So they can, you can only go in there at sort of when there's some water here. It's not ideal. I'd like, if I've got a boat, I'd like to have it sort of access all the time. But these owners are happy, happy just to have it, have the boat available just for interesting. Okay, Port Talbot. I think this takes us back round the other way, but we'll just go there anyway. Rattle through it. Port Talbot. So we're just down from Swansea. Swansea. Port Talbot. Interesting spot. Nice harbour look. Nice harbour. Okay, what have we got here? Jackstone P. So it's either, let's put it this one here, I'd say. Easy access fishing venue, so again, if you've got easy access, perfect. Usually provides comfortable fishing but can be dangerous in stormy weather. Oh dear. A large number of mostly smaller species of whiting, dab, dogfish can be caught here, but larger, more desirable species such as big cod, bass, and congregates are also caught on occasion. Abavaron, Abavon. Sands can produce very good bass fishing in some and still produce some bass when there is some sea running on rang rum lug rum peel rang. Various flatfish species are also caught here. Chance of a ray to a sand eel or mackerel strip bait. Long way out. Okay. So again, somewhere where you can go where you know you can run into some good fish, you know, you might get some smaller fish. Um be depending on what the tides are doing, which way the wind's blowing, time of year, night time. Again, this strikes me as a place is where if you've got if you're in the grapevine or you speak you in communication with a tackle shop, you get tipped off, hey, there's some big fish running past, catching some good ones off here, that's when you want to go down. You don't want to flog yourself to death at venues, you know. Um, usually it's about sort of channeling your energy. And not exhausting yourself, driving around everywhere, something like this. It's information's key, so you want to you want to sort of go on the forums because some anglers are um, put their information on there of how well they've got on, and it, even if it's not a great report, it'll give you an idea what it's doing. If you think it will come good, do you know what I'm saying? So you, just, you know you can use any information is good on the on the forums to use for your fishing trip. But the be the best one is um, ring up the tackle shop. They usually tell you. They usually let you in. 
if there's anything happening. Because um, I want you to buy their bait and their tackle. Um, you can ask them nicely. I'm sure they'll tell you. Um, Swansea. So we've just we've just done Swansea. So I'm just going to go um, go back into Swansea, but I'm not going to bring it up on here. So I'm just going to talk about it a bit because it gave us a little bit more information. Because I didn't really give you precise locations, but it's given me some more locations down here. Um, no, sorry, beg your pardon. We were talking about Cardiff, weren't we? No, this is Swansea, so we are Swansea. So I've me, me sort of losing the plot. It'll be the first time in my life. Uh, we don't want to go to Swansea Station. That's for sure. Here we go, Swansea. Swansea, Swansea. Caught the ferry from here once and went over to Ireland. All the way to Cork for a fishing trip, fishing week, and eight hours to get to Cork from there. Rough as hell, seasick, it was a nightmare. But we got there and we had some wicked fishing in Ireland. Lots of small fish, but um, the wrasse were good size. I tell you that now. Some bloody big wrasse over there. It was like every wrasse you could get over there is like about four pound. Well, where we were fishing anyway. Some bloody good fish. Um, anyway, so cut a long story short, East Pier, which is this one, uh, and Breakwater are not accessible to anglers, but the Outer West Pier is. So this one's accessible. You really want it to be that one, wouldn't it? Look at that channel there. Anyway. Um, so dogfish pouting. Conga eels of flounder. Fishing here with light gear produce mackerel and garfish to float fish, baits and spinners in summer. Winter can see good catches and some decent cod. There you go. There you go. So some, some good stuff in the winter. Further inland Swansea Marina can produce mullet to very stealthy tactics. And very small hooks and school bass and flounder can also be caught here. So, um, the marina... That's what it said, didn't it? Swansea Marina can produce mullet in here, all the way around there. And it mentions stealthy tactics. So what you would ideally want to use is something that resembles like waggler fishing. If you're good at coarse fishing and things like that, but um, you want like a waggler rod, you want like a little float, you want a little roach set up. Don't put any swan shot on it. And you can even fish with maggots and just lob that out and just, you know, you could probably put a little bit of polystyrene on the line if you want to keep it up a bit. You might find that might not sink, but you want it to sort of sit on the surface and you want to chum it a little bit with bread, bread and water in like a paste. So it's almost milky, so to speak, and just want to trickle that out there. And though that's the sort of stealthy little hooks, little fine fluorocarbons. You want to use to try and um, go for your mullet. I had, um, I was catching yellow eyed mullet overseas on small sabiki rigs with um, bits of steak. They seem to really like the steak, they like the blood in it. So you could try that. Try, 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 try little bits of beef, bits of steak. Um, all right. A place called the Mumbles. 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 Mumbles Pier. Right, so let's just zoom out so we can see where Mumbles is. Just down from Swansea. So you can see that we've Cardiff is here, we've gone round here, and we're now starting to get into some slightly different areas. So it's start getting a little bit more interesting now. What we've done is interesting, but what I'm saying is more a replica of what the Bristol Channel is like really from the other side you know what I'm saying um, it's a little bit more sandy here the Bristol Channel on the um, on the English side is more mud but here a similar sort of species but this is a bit more sand Rumbles Road so let's have a look there you go this is an interesting little area look. There you go. So this sort of area off this pier, 
around here. There's something about these rocks here. I'm just trying to think what it says. Um, so Mumbles Pier is a very good popular venue. Can produce a wide range of species. Mackerel, pollock, black bream. All right, new species there. Dogfish, various flatfish species. Various flatfish species. I think you'd run into turbot here. Maybe not many of them, but you would. You've got protect, got a chance here as you're starting to get round more this way. Um, fishing can take place from certain areas of the pier, oh dear. and anglers must purchase a ticket. All right. So if you're paying for a ticket, at least you know you, you get some sort of organisation about the whole thing. So everyone just turning up and you know casting over each other and this is that and the other. Um, pier closed overnight, like a lot of them are. Mumbles Head is made up of two islands, both of which can be accessed over low tide by a causeway. Right. Okay. So where is that? These are the two islands. It can be accessed. So that's obviously a hot. This is a high water's here. Look, you see the water there. So it's fairly high. So it looks like you can probably walk around here. But again... It's that old, you know, getting cut off and all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, so, Mumble's Head is made up of two islands, both of which can be accessed over low tide by a causeway. Swansea Coast Guard should be contacted if you plan to stay on the Mumble's Head over high water. All right. As well intentioned members of the public sometimes call out the Coast Guard when they see people cut off on the island, believe they require rescuing. So if you've got to call someone to say, Oh, I'm staying overnight somewhere, I mean uh, that's for me that's starting to get a little bit too much. I'd rather go somewhere where I can just turn up, do what I want, I ain't got to tell anybody do the fishing can't be that much better to want to go and do that. I mean, the sort of thing you're gonna go and do if you're gonna have a sort of a barbecue with a, and f three or four of your fishing mates and you're gonna go over there. But If you've got to contact the Coast Guard telling me that you're going fishing, I mean, come on. I know you do it out in a boat sometimes. You're just, you know, as you're going out of the harbour, you say, bring up the Coast Guard and say, oh, hi, I'm going to be back at five o'clock or something like that. Fair enough. But, I mean, good bass fishing here from spring to summer. Conga eels to the usual strong gear. Rock marks can also produce very good pollock and grass. Mackerel and garfish can be caught on float fished baits. All right, then, summertime. So here's a chance of catching exotic species such as a trigger fish. And cod and white knolls present in winter. So I think the pier, the pier would do the job, I think. That really would. There's some lovely bits of beach here. Yeah, just down from Swansea. Interesting, interesting. All right. Interesting. Mooslade Bay. Okay, Mooslade Bay. Okay. Mooslade. Just thinking about time because um, I might have to do this in a part one and two because because I'll flip this on <laughs> um, but the way it's going it's been dragged out it's like because when you're going through all this information it's like it's going to make sense to do it over another video I think personally. Anyway, Moose Lane Bay. So this might be the last one. On this, we'll call this part one, and we'll come back for part two. So, right, Moose. This looks a bit more sort of um, a bit more exposed, a bit more sort of in the wilderness. Uh, just zoom out a little bit. Moose Lane Bay. Moose Lane Bay. Look at this. Sand there. Okay. 
So it's a bay made up of sandy beach with rocky areas. Mackerel are around in summer. Spinning or feathers, daylight spinners will catch them from the rockier, deeper areas. Plenty of bass are also around with smaller school bass being out in number, but some very large bass are caught from this mark as well. Squid, ragworm, peeler, grab, and mackerel baits are all worth trying. Good fish can be caught from both the sandy bay and the rocks. Other species can also be caught from this area with dogfish, various rays, as well as others caught here. Well, they're talking about this as a specialist bass, bass spot. So it looks like spinning for bass from these rocks here. And in, in, in here. Um, I'm not quite sure what, what it'd be like. Again, this area here, you can get over this and get onto this area, this area here, and this area right around here. It screams bass, even these ones in here. So, you know, that specialist sort of, oh, what's that? This headland looks quite good. Oh, bloody hell. Look at this. Look at that. That looks fantastic, that does. Very bassy. All the way along here. There's some little trials. You can see some trials on there, look. See them, look? But you would not want to be fishing that in a big sea. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. And it looks like it gets cut off as well. Just here. So, again, it's one of them sort of spots. It looks good. All right. So that is a that looks like an all-out epic. That one. Where's that one? It's just down from. Interesting. Very very interesting. All right. We'll call that one. Um, part one. We'll do part two some other time. Um, I've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we've thirteen more to go. So we'll have to do it in a part two. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the video. There's some useful information there. Um. And look, this video reminds me of more sort of fishing the Bristol Channel a bit. But we're starting to sort of, this part two is going to be more reminisce of probably sort of fishing the, the um, Cornish coast, I would imagine. Just from the south and the north Cornish coast. Where, you know, you're sort of spinning for bass off the rocks and things like that. Um, and obviously all these ports, you know, they're going to have your char boat. would recommend definitely doing um, but yeah I right, hope you enjoyed the video and um, I will see you on part two okay thank you